Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle with Dan Fancy Creations, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on the iced coffee inspired tumbler. I really like how these turn out, and I love coffee, so these are right up my alley. <laughs> Um, I know that there are a couple tutorials out there already on this, which are great tutorials, but I have had a few people ask if I can help them troubleshoot some issues that they had when they were trying to recreate this look. And I figured that I would do a tutorial and kind of help you guys if you may have had issues in the past trying to use certain products. Um, I do use Armor Art mixed in epoxy versus dropping white inks onto the cup. I feel like using Armor Art gives me a little bit more control over how the white spreads and where I'm going to put it. So instead of just big blobs of white ink, I can kind of apply it in a line or use my popsicle stick and kind of like maneuver it where I want it to. I also do mine in two different layers. I feel like that gives a lot of depth to the tumbler. And I added some fun caramel drips to the side of it because who doesn't love caramel or chocolate in their coffee? Uh, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If I can help you guys troubleshoot anything that you may find you're struggling with when you try to recreate it, please let me know and I'll do my best to kind of help walk you through how I do mine. So if you guys are ready to see how I do this fun iced coffee tutorial, then let's get started. So obviously we are going to start with a prepped white tumbler as always and I'm going to spray paint this smoky beige and use another dark brown just to add some color to my tumbler. I base coated a different color because if I have little spots of epoxy that are showing through or inks that aren't quite as transparent then a brown base will show through versus white. So I am spray painting the bottom darker because I just kind of thought if um, this was an actual coffee cup, then the bottom of the coffee would be darker than the top until the cream gets to the bottom of the <laughs> cup. So once you have it spray painted and it's dried, we're gonna put it on the turner. You will need some epoxy, white armor art, and a few different shades of brown ink. I'm using brown from Bria Reese, caramel from Tim Holtz, and coffee and brown from Let's Resin. And we're going to start by just slathering on the epoxy. This was 20 milliliters, but I would probably use a little bit more next time. I just had to pour a little bit out um, because I needed some for my white armor art. But you definitely want enough epoxy on there so that it will move around when we hit it with some heat, but not enough to where it will pull around the handles of the cup. So once you get your epoxy on there, we are going to hit it with our torch, pop all those bubbles. I have the torch from CC DIY and I love it. And what we're going to do is start just dropping some inks onto the tumbler. And again, I kind of dropped them how I would think an actual coffee cup would look if you were pouring cream into the coffee. So I tried to focus all of my darker inks towards the bottom of the tumbler. I did a few in the middle and on the top, but mainly my darker inks were from the middle down. And this one is Brown by Bria Reese. And then I start dropping some Caramel from Tim Holtz. 
And the caramel is definitely more translucent, which is why I think it's important to base coat your cup a similar color to the inks that you're going to use because I personally would not want white showing through my inks. This way it will be a light brown or dark brown that's showing through, which is consistent with coffee. And this next color I use, I believe is called coffee. And I like this one because it was very dark, <laughs> which isn't super common with inks. A lot of times they're very translucent, but this one was very dark for, and it's from Let's Resin. So I will definitely keep this one on hand. And you're basically just going to drop them until you are happy with your coverage. And I went in and added a few more of the medium color brown that I was using to a few spots. And definitely make sure that you get your handles too. Don't forget about them. And now we are going to add some armor art. So this is mixed in epoxy. I use a decent amount of armor art because I like it really opaque. And I just started kind of swirling the armor art around the cup. And I started with the armor art close to the top and the middle and worked my way down. And with armor art, a little goes a long way. So once we hit this with some heat and it starts to spread out a little bit, you'll be able to see that just one thin line goes so far with this. And I really like how Armor Art spreads in epoxy, which is why I like using it versus white ink. And again, don't forget your handles. And once you get a decent amount on, don't forget your bottoms too, if you want some cream on the bottom. And once you're happy with the white that you have on there, we are going to get our heat gun out. Now, I don't use my heat gun for much. I usually use my torch unless I need to move epoxy around. Now, my heat gun has a temperature gauge on the back, so I can turn it down really, really low. That way, I will not burn my epoxy when I'm trying to move it around a little bit. So we are basically just going to heat the ink and the armor art up a little bit. I did have to raise my temperature a little bit because it was really cool and it was not moving my epoxy at all. Um, and yes, I'm getting my heat gun very close to my epoxy, but again, that is because my heat is not turned up. If you try to do this with your heat gun on like full blast heat, you will definitely burn your epoxy. So I do not advise doing that. But as we kind of go through this video, you guys will be able to see how the white is kind of changing and blending into the brown.
And after it spins for a little bit, if you feel like you need to drop a little bit more ink or armor art in certain places that may look bare, you can definitely do that. So this is basically what it looks like after the first layer is cured. And we are going to repeat the same process. So I have my clear epoxy again. And you are just going to slather that on your tumbler. Make sure that every spot is covered really, really well. Don't forget to check your handles. Make sure that every little spot is covered. Get your bottoms, your tops, your handles, everything. And once we have everything covered again, we are going to hit it with our torch and pop all those bubbles And then we are going to drop our inks and armor art. But this time I am not going to drop as many inks or add as much armor art. I'm really just going in and adding inks to spots that I think may need it. And I also like the look of the white or the cream being covered by some of the brown inks a little bit because it actually looks like the ink is kind of circling around in the darker coffee. And this time, since I'm only adding a little bit of armor art, I just drag my popsicle stick through the epoxy a few times and not add like big streaks of it. And then one more time, we are going to hit it with our heat gun and move the armor art and the inks around so they kind of swirl in and blend together. So once you are generally happy with the look of the tumbler, you're going to let it spin and cure, and then we will be ready to add our drips. This is what the tumbler will look like after it has cured and has been sanded really well. 
I also dremeled my edges, which helps them get really smooth. If you have not seen how to do that yet, I will link my video in the description. I also went ahead and mixed up some epoxy. I had some things to do downstairs, so I just mixed some up and let it sit for a little bit. Um, I usually do not let my epoxy sit, but I figured why not go ahead and do that tonight? So it's already a little bit thick. And I used um, regular artist resin for my drips because it already is a thicker formula. And I used these two browns. It's just Bria Reese Brown and Tim Holtz Caramel. And when you add nice and thick, be aware that it will add a milky white hue to the epoxy if you're using inks which is perfect for the caramel color that I was wanting. So nice and thick is basically just powder if you guys have not used it. And I add two small little scoops into my measuring cup. And since this is a powder, I just kind of lightly fold in the nice and thick into the epoxy. You don't want to start stirring really quickly because that will cause the powder to start floating in the air, which is what we do not want. And we are basically just going to mix this into the epoxy. And once it looks good and dissolved, I will start kind of smushing the epoxy onto the side of the mixing cup just to get out any of the nice and thick clumps that may be in there because you don't want those clumps to be visible when you apply your drips to your tumbler. And this can take a little bit of time to do. Um, I do use a lot of nice and thick because I like my drips very, very thick. If they're still moving, I do not apply it to my cup yet. I like to wait until my epoxy is not moving at all or barely, barely moving. So you will see me mixing a lot of nice and thick into this epoxy. So I am just continuing to mix this all up and you guys can see that the nice and thick has changed the color of the ink so it actually looks more like the caramel color that I was going for. So if you are going to use nice and thick with your inks or other colors just be aware that it could change the color that you're adding to the epoxy. So I always test my epoxy on the side of my mixing cup and this is still too thin. I want it to be as thick as I can get it um, with still being able to manipulate it a little bit. So I am just adding a little bit more nice and thick to my epoxy. Um, 
even though it looks like I'm using a whole lot of it, I still have a good bit left in the container. Um, it is pretty fluffy, so you can shake it up and it looks like you haven't even used anything out of the container yet. So it's pretty much getting to the consistency that I want it. Y'all can see how thick it actually is. So you can see that it is not moving very much at all, if any. And that is the consistency that I like to apply it to my tumblers. Just like that. So now that it is ready to apply to my cup, I will take a decent amount of epoxy onto my popsicle stick. And the first thing I do is smooth a thin line of it onto my tumbler. So I am just putting a small line around the top edge of my cup, just dripping it a little bit onto the popsicle stick, and then I go and kind of smooth it out. So again, just putting a small line and then what I will do after everything is smoothed out, I will look for the drips that are naturally occurring on the cup and just kind of use those as my guides for where I'm going to put my actual drips. So I just take a small little bead of epoxy and add it to where the drips are already forming. So you are basically going to do this all the way around your cup then I will take my torch and pop any little bubbles that I may see. And once this epoxy has cured, I will put it on my turner for a final layer of epoxy. And that is pretty much it. So here are some finished pictures of what they look like. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to check the next one coming up. Also, if you want more tips, tricks, and Tumblr tutorials, be sure to find my tutorial group on Facebook. We would love to have you guys there. Thanks for watching.